Okay, so I thought that I would um, show you how to draw Grandad, who is the main character from Grandad's Island, and talk about a few of the things that inspired me to, to create this character in the first place. So um, the first thing that I would start with when I'm drawing Grandad is, is his nose. So I'll start with his nose, and um, he's got quite a wide nose, and I was looking at various um, various people and characters um, who might inspire the look of this of this um, of Grandad and um, I actually one of one of them was Michael Palin so I looked at it I thought he got quite twinkly little eyes like a nice Grandad character so I thought he would something about his face although the overall inspiration was Darwin who has a had a big bushy white beard, Charles Darwin. So let's draw his beard like this. Coming around. And he also has a bit of a he looks a little bit like Father Christmas, which with a big white beard like that, which I think is quite a nice coincidence because he's also a a friendly friendly looking old man character. So there's his beard and his nose and his eyes, um, and he's got a very small curled up moustache. So it goes like this, and I'm using a grey ink brush pen because I like the way that it soaks into the paper. And he's got a very little mouth, he's giving a little smile like this. And then on the sides of his head, he needs a few strands of hair. Don't go all the way to the top because he's wearing a hat. So this is his hat. It's like this. It's the brim of his hat. And this is also because this was from another picture of Charles Darwin. He was wearing a hat, so I thought he'd look good in a hat. It makes him look like he's quite interesting old man, and he's maybe goes off exploring places. And in his hat, a little feather as well, like so. And he's got some quite thick eyebrows, so I'm going to give him his eyebrows like this, but they're just white eyebrows. And. Need to make a little few marks here to make sure you can see that where his beard starts like that. Now going down, we've got his body. A couple of lines going outwards like this to make his body. And he's wearing a bit of a tank top. Which if I had some colours here, this would be navy blue. But he's got a, a V-neck comes around. And he's got a he's wearing a grey shirt, he's got his collar like that, and then he's got a tie on. I thought he'd look good if he was a bit of an old fashioned grandad character that he was wearing his wearing his shirt and tie. He looks nice and smart. There's a bit of a pattern there of some black squares on his on his tank top. And for this drawing I'm going to put his his hands behind his back, so he's got his shirt sleeves out like this, which are rolled up to the tops of his arms, and then his his elbows and his arms going behind his back, like so. So he's got his hands behind his back, and then we need to draw his legs. And um, when I was designing, when I was thinking about what, what Grandad should be wearing, I nearly put him in some trousers some normal trousers, but then I thought it would make him, because he needs to feel quite vulnerable in the story, um, I thought it would be quite good if he was wearing something that he shouldn't, wouldn't normally be wearing during the daytime, so I gave him some pyjama trousers, I gave him some sort of classic striped pyjama trousers, so they're quite wide-legged, baggy trousers with a little drawstring at the top. And again, if I had a colour pencil, they would be pale blue stripes, but we're going to put grey stripes. If you're copying this drawing, you could do this in, in colour. 
And then out the bottom of his trousers, come his legs, the bottom of his legs and his feet. And in the book, he's left his slippers behind. So he's just got bare feet, which I thought was nicer because he could walk around on the sand in his bare feet when he's on his island. So there's his toes. Don't need to count them all out exactly as long as it looks like there are five there. There's his feet planted in the sand and underneath him I'll just put a little shadow like that by putting my brush pen on its side. So, and he hasn't got his stick with him anymore. So then I think perhaps we should put a little drawing of Sid in beside him to show the differences between him and Sid. So I wanted Sid needed to look like a little boy, so he needs to be smaller than Grandad. I'm going to start with his head and need to draw his hair as well. So there's his hair on the top of his head. Nice curly line like that and then bringing in around his face here and he's got two little sticking out ears like this. Draw one ear on each side and a couple of little lines there to indicate the insides of his ears. And then, so there's his head and here I do a few little marks to suggest the hair on the side of his head like so and he's got a, a little round nose like this it's almost a circle but you don't draw it all the way around and then here are his eyes just two dots like this one two and he's smiling as well a little smile and we have him doing the same pose as Grandad, so let's pop his arms down the side like this and he's wearing a little vest top so line there, the line there, arms behind his back going across and we could, if this was in colour these could be red, these three stripes going across like that and then he's wearing some shorts as well. He's wearing some shorts, like so. And I'm gonna give him bare feet as well. He's got smaller feet than Grandad because he's a little boy. So there we go, a few toes, his legs, another shadow there, I think, on the sand. And then we could sort of think a little bit as well about the background, what's behind them. So if they're on the beach, a bit like they are on the front cover of the book, I'm going to draw a wiggly line like this, and a few little dots in the sand to make it look a bit like there's some sand there. Okay, maybe we put in the foreground there's some some plants, some sort of jungle plants. We'll just make them all sort of bit big and messy like this. Okay. And let's draw in the sea, so the horizon line, so the line that you see in the distance when you're at the beach. And the distant, very flat line, so we draw that in going across the back. And a few little dashed lines like this, this is just like Imagine what the sun looks like when it's reflecting off the sea. When I'm drawing, I'm always trying to remember what things look like when I've seen them in real life and try and replicate that on the paper, on the page. And perhaps we've got some little clouds in the distance here, like so. And I think we should have the toucan from the story in there as well to finish it off. So here's his big beak. So this here's his eye. This and this toucan, he needs a pair of wings. So he's flying along, so we're gonna put one wing down there like that. Feathery fingers on the wings. There's one in his 
back straight line going out the back like this. And then a fan sort of shaped tail at the back like that. Do that. And there should be another wing that we can just see at the back there like that behind the other one. And he's got three stripes. He's got a big yellow beak, three orange stripes on his beak. And then perhaps show that he's flying along. I sometimes like to draw a few little feathers that have just fallen out as he's going along like that. A little bit more of a shadow on Grandad's hat, I think, to finish it off. There we go. It's a finished drawing of Grandad and Sid and a toucan from Grandad's Island. Mm -hmm.